It is a company and a stock that is attempting a turnaround. Signet Jewelers, the retailer known for big brands like K Jewelers, Zales, Jared, and Piercing Pagoda, just to name a few, trying to move forward from a scandal that rocked the company last year. Former Signet CEO Mark Light stepping down in the midst of a sprawling gender discrimination lawsuit. I spoke exclusively with Signet's brand new CEO, Virginia Drosas, and asked her how the company is approaching shaking up its culture. Listen. Signet is uh, now on what we call the path to brilliance. It's a transformation plan, a bold plan to really help us redefine what it means to be the category leader. We launched it last month at our earnings call. And I'm pleased to say that we're already seeing some green shoots uh, of positive growth from that. Our Zales brand, for example, has now two quarters in a row of positive comps that we've been able to report. Um, so we're beginning to get the company back on track, I think. It's going to take some time, but we're focused on customer first, building a truly seamless omni-channel experience, and really, as you said, changing our culture to be one that's more agile and efficient. When I talk to investors and analysts about this company, I hear two narratives. One, it's a financing company, and that's a hard business to be in. And two, it's a mall business, and that's an even tougher business to be in right now with the trends we've seen in retail. How do you combat those narratives? Well, I define our company differently. We're a company that really delights consumers by helping them celebrate life and express love. We're, we have the precious opportunity be, to be part of their most meaningful life moments. Uh, we do offer credit as an opportunity for our customers to be able to purchase their jewelry in the best way. And I'm very proud that we do that. We make our jewelry accessible to all customers, but we're, we are not a financing company. We have announced that we've outsourced our credit, uh, and so that's off of our balance sheet, and we're single-mindedly focused on being the most trusted, most innovative, most customer-focused jewelry company on the planet. How exposed are you to the mall? So we still have a broad footprint in high-performing malls, uh, and that's a very good thing. We have, over the last number of years, been very proactive in our real estate strategy. Uh, in fact, we closed a couple of hundred stores last year. We've announced we'll do the same this year. So far and away, the vast majority of our stores are profitable, and we've already begun to establish a strong off-mall footprint in addition to our mall footprint. And, and let me tell you what's important about that. Customers in the jewelry business are really on an omni-channel journey. More than 40% of Even customers... Even with engagement rings, they don't need to go try that? Well, they do. That's the point. It's not just an e-commerce business. So more than 40% of the time, they start their journey online doing research, understanding about the four Cs, the different colors of gold or shapes of diamonds. But more than 90% of the time, they buy in store. And they want to buy from a company they trust and from a jewelry consultant who's helped them to really find the right product. What have you learned about millennials to change this business, the way they do date and propose and marry and shop for these rings. Well, you know what's wonderful is there, there are certainly things that are different about millennials, but there are a lot of things that are the same as their parents. So, for example, millennial consumers are equally as likely as their parents to get engaged with a diamond engagement ring. They just get engaged on average about three years later. Another really interesting fact is that 40% of our shoppers for bridal jewelry already have children. So they are on a less linear path typically than their parents were, but that to me is a disruptive opportunity opportunity for us. I mean, how do we how do we make jewelry available, maybe even in customers' homes to, with a bridal concierge service, something that can help make their lives easier. Can you give us an update on the lawsuit that we have followed with thousands of employees accusing the company of everything from sexual harassment, discrimination, gender, pay and promotion problems? Yeah. What do we need to know? Well, I, of course, Sarah, I can't speak directly about ongoing litigation. That That's just not possible. But what I can say is that it's very important to me to lead a company that's focused on integrity, respect, equal opportunity for all people, and really has diversity and inclusion at the core of who we are. It's part of who I am as a leader. I have a track record my entire career of building diverse teams. 
And I know because I've engaged in the data that Signet very clearly has equal opportunity. We pay women equally for doing the same job with the same level of experience as their male counterparts, I'm very confident. You've also brought some really high power female to the job, to the board, inside yeah. the company. I have. Um, we are not only a women-led company, we're a women-powered company. 70% of our employees are women, 68% of our field leadership, now more than half of my C-suite are women. And we have one of the most diverse boards of any public company, now with half women. What's even more important to me is that we are, are very great professionals who are fully capable and excited about turning this company around and getting it transformed. Our thanks to Jenna Drosos, the new CEO of Signet, who's got a long to-do list, guys, not just on changing the culture of the company. I and mean, this was, as you know, a hated stock, a shorted stock Heavily by hedge shorted funds. stock and to great effect from those who've been shorted for a while because, of course, it is down sharply over the last couple of years. Right, down to 2012 low. So, so she's XP&G, actually. She ran their beauty business. Hasn't really been in the discretionary space, but clearly has a whole strategy. I thought some of the consumer insights are very interesting that millennials get engaged three years later oh, yeah. than the previous generation. And she said 90% still of people, 90% uh, of people getting engaged, the man buys the engagement ring. That still is like purely so traditional. 10% the woman buys the buys ring? The, <laughs> buys their own engagement ring. It I occurred guess, to uh, me that was a possibility. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> This is an equal opportunity. Yes. But actually, I asked her if, if the scandal and the lawsuits were hurting the perception among women and actually hurting sales for the company, which is something that's been written about. She said, not really, but actually what you're seeing is more women buying their own jewelry. So yes, this is a, this is a whole new generation, guys. Well, yes. now, that was an important interview for her, right? First time she really yeah, communicated never that way, right, Sarah? Yes. And, and obviously, given all the controversy that you were discussing with her to a certain extent. Right. She's only been on the job about nine months. She took over in August. and. Clearly has her work cut out for her. The first quarter, though, did not go well. She lowered guidance. Uh, analysts now make the case that, I mean, the, the bull case on this company right now is that it's cheap. But clearly, she's got a lot to say in terms of the strategy, closing stores, refreshing stores, catering to a whole different audience. And of course, the biggest thing is changing the culture inside. Yeah, not easy to do. Certainly not overnight. Thanks, sir. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.